Aries, this is your reading for the first two weeks of November. So let's see what you have coming up. Wanted to let you guys know too that if you look at Aries astrologically and depending if it's your rising, your moon, your sun, and how much placement you have and where it is most prevalent in your chart, it's actually a really good month for relationships, love, and this is with friends, family members, and then your romantic relationships, of course. So you guys have a very positive influence coming up in the month of November. There's also a lot of prosperity coming to you. So let's see what's going on, what you're going to look at for these first two weeks of November and how it's going to be. Okay, so you know, I do not read reversals. So that's just my style. All right, so the first cards that we have, well, this is an interesting reading for you, Aries. I'm using a Celtic spread, and then I'm going to layer. The first card that I have here is the Three of Cups. So the Three of Cups is typically a card of celebration and happiness. And this is going to be within yourself, and it can also indicate with just more than one person. And so if any of you have had any issues with getting yourself out there, fear, you are escaping, feeling like you need to escape or you need to get out more, but yet you're suffering maybe from a little bit of anxiety about, oh my God, where do I go? What do I do? That doesn't sound really Aries, but depending on your chart, it can indicate that you're struggling with some uncertainty. And so what I want you to think about in these first two months is you're coming into a time of some celebration and happiness. Stop looking at your past. Stop looking behind you because your thoughts and your habits and your patterns that you have from your past are actually creating the anxiety. Anxiety is living in the future, worried about, oh my God, what's going to happen? And if you keep thinking about what happens in the past, what do you think you're going to create? You're creating the same things. When actually what you're supposed to do, it says, is put yourself in a state where things are moving and flowing more smoothly, thinking more about what's coming in front of you and what you want. It says you need to start doing some inner work here because you're thinking about the past. The Five of Cups has a really interesting story behind it, and it's crowning you. This is actually what you're thinking about. It's on top of your head. It has three cups here that have spilled blood. The man is wearing a black cloak two upright cups behind him. There's a river, a castle, and a bridge. The river is emotion. The black, the person is grieving, forlorn, over what? Spilled blood, emotions, things from the past that really created a lot of pain, that may have felt like you killed your dreams. And look at the three of cups here and the three overturned cups here. And so you're so afraid you're not going to get ahead. And instead, it says, stop looking at that because that's more of what you don't want. Look at this man being handed a beautiful cup and sitting there and he's got his arms and his legs crossed. And he's like, sister, I've been or whoever is handing him this. I have three cups here that I was already filled with things I don't want. Don't be handing me the same thing. Three, three, three. Look at this. You have work to do. So you need to start planting some seeds in your mind that are going to look a lot different than the seeds that you have planted. So one seed. Okay. And that's what this seven of pentacles is talking about. This guy has planted his garden. Now he's resting and look at the base of his feet. He's got this pentacle. The seed that he planted here is creating this here. And he's looking at his great works. And so you already know that you have the ability to create. And this is what you no longer want. So if you are getting out of a relationship, if you want to get into a relationship, if you're suffering from a relationship from your past where you want someone to come back, 
or you're missing them, or you've got grief, or you've gone through a recent breakup, what got you to those three original cups here of happiness? It certainly wasn't thinking about what's going to happen and how somebody is going to lie to you or cheat, right? Or, or anything I should say in your life where you have mo emotional happiness. Maybe we're looking at a job. Maybe we're looking at finances, but God knows if you're going to be looking here at this seven and these nine of swords here, you're going to get more of the same grief. So the cards are saying, pull yourself out of that, recognize the divinity within you. And that is to create more of a pattern within yourself emotionally. These swords, if you notice, are going across water in a boat. You are the one that is steering the ship. The emotional calm of this water here is if you calm your emotions by calming what you're thinking about, you're going to create more of this Ten of Cups. Look what's coming right in front of you. If I were just to read this as a prediction, I would say to someone, if this was just their spread, wow, you know, you've got some things coming up that are going to be smoothing out. and You've got a happiness in front of you if you want a family. If you want a relationship, the seeds are being planted here, even to rekindle an old relationship. That's what this is saying. And what I'm telling you here is you have to start thinking from your heart. You have to start thinking more of a place of abundance to create the future of the abundance that you want. For example, love, money, career, health. Look at the nine of pentacles after the seven of pentacles. So we have the seven and eight of pentacles, and then we move to the nine. And you can see what was planted comes to fruition for you. And it's coming up, as a matter of fact, within about the next three weeks to the next month. But how you direct your mind, how you direct your thought is going to make the difference between living in the same junk and emotional shit, if you will, of what you don't want to coming into feeling your way into it. So you have to feel it as you're thinking it. You can't just say to yourself, you know, the typical affirmations that everybody says, I'm wealthy. And, and your subconscious mind is saying, no, you're not. Wake up. But here's the thing. If you start to say just one word and you start to think to yourself, yes, I am. So one word, wealth. One word, love. You see what I'm saying? And my camera, I know, does an autofocus here. And so I want to make sure that you see all of these cards. Okay, so love, prosperity, abundance. This is all really important for you. I want you to think about what you want, what you truly want from your heart, because that's what this is talking about in this reading. This is about creating a future just like Aries has astrologically. They can bring love in. You can bring wealth in. You can bring in a new cre a career. You can heal your body. But it says you have got to have two things. You've got to have blind faith and you've got to be willing to move forward. And you also have to know that if you're choosing to not choose, you're going to get more of that. So choice is your superpower. And as I pull these cards down so you can see them better, it says you need to start small. And you need to also look at the fact that you have a balance. It's a balancing act that you're going to do here in this 3D world. And that is is surrounded by this beautiful figure eight, the sign of infinity. And this person is dancing on the earth and they're juggling two pentacles. And also it says, when you're done, you can rest, but you absolutely have to calm the storm behind what's going on in your mind. So you see, through this storm, you will be able to manage this beautifully if you can change your thoughts and you start small. One single thought. Name what you want and hold that thought. That's how the subconscious mind can accept the new thoughts, habits, and patterns that you want to bring into your life. Okay, so I'm going to layer this reading with another deck that I use. And we're going to get a little bit more answers. So what I want to know is, in particular, what is it that 
that Aries needs to think about and focus on. All right. And I'm shuffling this really cool card. It's called the Tea Leaf deck, and I really love it. And so as these cards show out, this is going to be a little bit interesting for you, Aries. So remember, if your moon sign, uh, your sun sign, or your rising sign is Aries, even your Venus. Okay, so it, what you're focusing on is, and you're actually planting seeds, it says for the month of July. And it says that there are some affairs with your family. Okay, so this would indicate to me, this is talking about dealing with a relationship with a man. So Aries, in particular, if, if it's a woman or if it's a man, it's very important that you look at the male energy in your life. Where did your heartache come from? Because if it's a father or an ex-boyfriend, an ex-lover, a brother, somebody who hurt you, particularly check out maybe during a summer month, maybe when you were growing up, maybe during adolescence, maybe in college, if you didn't go to college, maybe in your early 20s or 30s. And it says it's reflecting the relationship that you had with the masculine energy in your life. And it created a lot of heartache. And it says what you're, what you're grieving is what you no longer have. And what you need to heal is this part of yourself. You have to recognize that as things become warm in the warmer months, and well, especially for those that are here on this hemisphere, what we have happening is you're going to have, you're looking at affairs that are coming up with a very important man that's in your life that really hurt you. And for many of us, it is a male figure such as a father or an uncle. And it says there's a lot of great personal sorrow over this. Now, the other way to read this, and I think this is very important for Aries, is it can also be controlling your own mind. A man, just like the card of the emperor in the tarot, is owning it. And boy, look at this. It's over love. Be and so what we're talking about is healing your heart. And this is all about the masculine. This is really interesting. This is going to resonate with somebody. So it's going to be like climbing a ladder towards success. And it says when we get into the month of April, you're really going to be feeling good. And even, you know, it says somebody's going to be acting a little bit stupidly here, but you still will feel emotionally secure because, boy, and there's a lot of sexual energy coming up. You've got, I'm going to tell you something, you're either rekindling a relationship here with somebody in your life, or you are healing the relationship within your father, with your father or a masculine figure, or just owning your own sexual energy. Remember, sexual energy is very creative. And so what I want you to think about is where am I focusing my creative energy? You, and you can sometimes feel it. Many people are very, very sexual. And what they don't realize is you can actually utilize that energy and direct it where you need to go. If there's too much concern with sexual energy, it says it, your, your plans will not be successful. Why? Because you're not focusing on the love. If you're focusing on the heartache, on the tears of the past, you're not going to be successful. If you're focusing too much on sexuality, you're not going to be successful. Sex is not love. Sex is just sex. And if you want to just have sex, that's fine. So it, and, and this is, oh, wow, this is great. Okay. For those of you who are looking to get pregnant, who are Aries, and I can tell you when I do my private readings, there's one thing I, I know I can do, and that's predict pregnancy. Um, I would expect that you're probably going to get pregnant sometime in April. Um, and it and it looks like be very, very careful because it says you might not be feeling like, oh, my God, this is not the right time or, you know, and this is also indicating Aries, be careful in the month of Aries. If you guys are not on birth control, get on birth control if you don't want to get pregnant. What an interesting reading this is. So this would also be for men and for women, because men, if you are being wildly sexual or maybe not as conscientious as you should be, you could wind up with a pregnancy. 
the beauty about this is there is a deep sense of a relationship that comes from this. And so this I actually like, but it is saying, so the warnings would be, hey, you know what? There's some things that you have to clear up with a man in your life. Okay. And it's how you were loved or, or how you relate to love. And it isn't sexual. And it does say, as you begin to move through the month of November, July is where we're focused because this reading is saying you're doing a lot of healing over that. You really start to climb the ladder when you get into April, no matter how stupidly someone acts, it says you can handle it. And you also need to make sure that you are not being over-sexualized in the way that you use your, your energy, use that energy to be creative, to create more of the things that you want. Because if you're not paying attention, you're going to create a baby. So if you don't want the baby, you got to do something about that. You guys know exactly what to do. But there is a deepening of a relationship that comes. And there's a deepening of a sense of self that comes. So for those of you who want a child, get ready, because that's definitely going to happen. And it says you could temporarily, possibly, you know, you're worrying, maybe, you know, is this good? Is this going to be balanced? And it says you're keeping your life in balance. You're it, definitely keeping your life in balance. Um, it looks like there's probably going to be a lot of male souls that come through during that time. And so, again, if you get pregnant late April, you might not find out you're pregnant until June. But and so this is really interesting. Boy. OK, so let's move on. OK, this is the first two weeks of November. Wow. I don't think maybe you could get pregnant those first two weeks. And if you do, maybe you have a July baby, which would be just about right. All right. So answer to all of this it's about letting go so that you can begin anew this is this really sums this up a lot so it says you know such you're letting go of things that no longer serve you and so you need to set your intention and plant that seed that one word and watch it come to fruition because it says you're going to release all of the emotional constraints that you have and things that are holding you back. This is all about the past that has held you back. And you're going to trust in the higher good and the guidance that it brings you. The spirit is bringing you guidance. It's speaking directly to your heart. You need to open your heart to be able to hear it. If you're still holding on to the past, I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to hurt you. Don't be afraid to let go. Men, women, cry. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you need. But you must release the past in order to move into this new beginning that you've been looking for. And so it says your vibration begins to change. But look at this, the seeds that you plant, how you vibrate, how you move, what your awareness is, and thinking about what you want to create, and that's how we're using our sexual energy here. And obviously, you create through that very powerful energy, and it can obviously it creates life, and it will also give life to your hopes and dreams. When your energy is free flowing, like I have here with the Six of Swords, so you have to have the courage and faith because right now you're going to be nudged forward hardcore in this first two weeks of November. Because it says your passion needs to be inspired. Your passion needs to be used in a way that creates more of what you want. That's what we're here for. I'm not saying that, you know, it's not sexual. It is sexual too. But sexual energy is creative energy. And if you are doing the same old, same old, which is just living that life where you're feeling uninspired and you're bored and you're thinking the same thing, it drains your soul energy. So it says the first two weeks of November are here for Aries, especially to reignite your passion, to rejoin yourself with the life within you instead of the life that is in the past. It doesn't even exist anymore. But if your mind is still there remembering these things over and over and over again, what are you doing? What are you creating with your mind and your feelings? So this is an opportunity right now, these first two weeks in November, set new goals. And it's going to reconnect you with everything that is sacred within you. 
All right, so one last card. Just remember, it's not a waiting game. Ah, the throat chakra. So it's talking about speaking into existence more of what you want. Now, when I add some more cards here, the conflict and defeat that you think about, okay, that has caused you to feel like, oh my God, I'm, I'm in despair. The throat chakra is saying, use your words, use the creative life force. And also your partnerships and alliances are going to be very, very important. So Aries, I'm telling you, this is the time to really think about your old habits and patterns. What caused you to lose a relationship? What has caused you to repeat the same patterns in relationships? And I'm talking about employment too, with your, with your, your coworkers, with your customers, with not having a job even. What about the relationship with yourself? Your partnerships and alliances are here to help build you up. What are you pulling towards you? Is it the old stuff? Because you keep thinking that you're, you're defeated. And look at that. The angelic card of balance. You have everything within you. This represents the tarot, the wand, the sword, the cup, and the pentacle. And this is an angel. That 11th card is a very, very spiritual card. It's calling in to balance your spirit and soul. It's calling in your thought energy, your feeling energy, your fiery sexual energy, because you are in the process of planting a very, very intense seed that is going to blossom like you wouldn't believe all the way into the seventh month of 2022. So you need to pay attention and you need to listen to this because you can heal anything and you can create beautifully here. So those of you that sun, rising, moon, even Venus, wherever your Aries is placed, and you can, you can look all this stuff up online. This is a very, very important reading for you because it is literally a very, it's the seed of creation. It is going to create the most beautiful outcome for you if you focus on what you want, not on what you don't want. So you're going to have to lift yourself out of that by paying attention to what you're thinking. And the very last card I'm going to put here is the card of patience. And so these two weeks, do you see how you're planting a seed? Everything for Aries, the very first card in the Zodiac, is about what you plant. And those seeds in your mind, those seeds in your heart, those seeds in your word. Remember, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is God. So we speak into existence, Aries. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to this. I hope this helped you. If you would like, please see the links down below. You can go to my website. You can listen to some of my podcasts, but you can also book a reading. So anyway, I hope you guys have a first great two weeks and that you can use some of this information. And um, I look forward to you watching my video for the last two weeks in November. Thank you.